Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are going to dip dye some sock yarn into some red food coloring. This McCormick's red food coloring contains a mixture of red 40 and red number 3. And so I'm curious what kind of gradient we'll see when we dip dye some 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon yarn into a bath with a lot of the red food coloring. In this pot I have eight cups of water and no vinegar yet. Since the food coloring contains some red number three and that can crash out at low pH, I want to wait and add the vinegar right before we're ready to start dip dyeing. So now let's add, whoop, that's one. Let's add 60 drops of red. Five, six, four, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60. 60 drops of the red food coloring. Now we just need to wait for this pot to sort of heat up a bit more and then we can start dip dyeing. I pre-soaked the Stroll fingering weight yarn for a couple hours in plain tap water at room temperature and I squeezed out a lot of the extra water to prepare for the dip dyeing. Okay we are approaching a simmer so I want to get ready to start dip dyeing. We are going to add two tablespoons of white vinegar to our dye bath because in addition to heat, you need acid in order for food colorings to bind to yarn. Now I'm gonna zoom out a bit, grab the yarn, and let's start dip dyeing. So I am curious about how pink versus red this will end up feeling. In general, I know from experience that red number three will bind to yarn faster than the red number 40. Um, the, whoop, <laughs> red number 40s tend, oof, that's hot. I'm gonna reduce the heat <laughs> to give myself an easier time. But interesting, I think that we're not even gonna hit red, that this is just gonna be a really nice sort of corally pink gradient. But given how pale the color at the end is, I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of the yarn. And the reason why I am moving it within the fiber is to, since this yarn isn't really moving in there, I want to try to spread the palest pink through and give all of the yarn a little bit of access to the color. But we almost have sort of an orangey coral along the outside all the way through to a blush pink. But I am going to let this sit in the pot for five minutes and then you'll come back and take a closer look. I'm really happy that in the five minutes it looks like that this tip did take up some more color. Let's see. Oh yeah, that water is clear. I mean there's still I mean, it's very, very blush, almost white in some of those areas, but it's still really nice. I don't know if we really see any breaking from the reds um, that are in here. I mean, in general, red number three tends to be more magenta, but I do think that this is pretty. I mean, it does actually approach a red. I'll be curious to see what it looks like when it dries, but it does have sort of an orange feel to it. Um, it's like on an orange side of red, which I don't think there's any yellow in the food coloring. So that's just interesting. <laughs> anyway, I am going to let this cool completely so we can wash our yarn. Our yarn has cooled and now I'm going to place it into some cool water so we can rinse it out. It's funny, I mean, I maybe we have sort of a tomato red or something at one end, but mostly, mostly it's sort of coral. All right, I'm adding some clear dish soap to this water. We're at the end of the bottle, so it's a bit foamy, but that water is clear. So I'm gonna go ahead and rinse this a few times 
to get the soap out and if there is any excess dye, this will let us rinse it out, but then we'll hang up the yarn to dry. Here is our finished dip dyed yarn. It's hard to say if we have red at the darkest end. So here are some red Legos. And we have a bit of what might be able to be called red. However, since the rest of the skein is so pink, when you look at it, your mind sort of feels like it's more of a pink. I think that 60 drops of food coloring are definitely not enough if you want to have more of the intense red in your gradient with less pink at one end. But you can get a really beautiful pink out of just the McCormick's Red food coloring. On superwash sock yarns like this 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon yarn, food coloring strikes extremely quickly, especially the red number threes and number forties that were in this red food coloring. If you wanted to use, sort of get a slower gradient, using yarns that had, that were non-superwash or maybe had some silk or alpaca would slow down the rate of the color absorption. So you could get a much more subtle gradient overall. Alternatively, you could dip dye a lot faster and the faster that you add the yarn to the pot, the slower the gradient will feel overall. I'm really pleased with this really happy color. Um, I think that it is a lot of fun, but now I am really curious and tempted to sort of kick up the volume. So maybe next time I'll try, who knows, 120 drops of red. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I hope that you enjoyed this dip dyeing video. If you liked what you saw in this video, please subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. I really enjoy exploring new ways to apply dyes to fiber so that way we can sort of push our creative envelopes and have a lot of fun. Thank you so much for watching.